On this Children of Sugar, the Generations series, the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service brings you Pursuing Knowledge. As you will see, certain aspects of the early education can compare to our Back Then series. However, you will also note that several of our nationals were no longer content with obtaining just the seventh standard certificate. I first attended a preschool that was held by the Methodist Church School, which was at the church hall where Irma Otley, she's one of the teachers that I could remember. I could remember also there was three of us, one behind the other, Jennifer Adams, Agnes Richardson, and myself. We were always battling. First, second, and third. First, second, and third. From there, I went to the junior school where Martha Delaney was headmistress. And then I went on to the secondary school. They used to call it the boys' school. And where Arnaldo Richards was the headmaster. And then it had Mr. Edward Griffin. Give us an idea of what school was like in those days. Was it still the single building where you know you had the platform and so forth, or was it now the different classrooms? When I entered the junior school, it had a cellar. It was the Anglican Church Hall. The cellar was a part of our classroom. My main teacher there was Ita Mills as well and Mrs. Buchanan. When we leave from them, we go upstairs in a higher grade before we go to the secondary school. It was Miss Delaney, the headmistress upstairs, and these teachers that I mentioned earlier. And on to the secondary school, Mr. Arnaldo Griffin. Yes, there were very strict teachers and Mr. Edward Griffin. But there are uh, some things that I could recall very well about Mr. Griffin. One time he said, you all learn your lesson. Learn well because not even a college degree you will be able to get a job. You have to get a master's or a PhD. And it's happening. We had a boy and girl school, and I went to the Sandy Point High School. Okay. Can you recall any of your classmates and maybe even some of your teachers? Classmates including Lionel Benjamin, Etta Broadbelt, Kennedy Dolphin, just to name a few. I had a special teacher, Miss Hanley, I forget what was the first name, from Crabill Sandy Point, and uh, teacher Irma Atley. Those two, I could recall, was very helpful to me because my mother didn't have it in abundance to give me. And those two used to bring me books, pencil, and then I used to go by Miss Stanley to finish the, the education in the afternoon. Any fun experience you can remember with your classmates or anything like that? We used to have a lot of fun. We used to share and we used to have a lot of games. We used to hide when, you know, if, if you're going to be a test, and Benji used to say, come on, Beulah, you have to pass. Lionel Benjamin I'm speaking about, mm -hmm. which I'm thanking greatly. And he used to say, come, let's go on the corner. And he read the, what we're going to do when we go back in. So sometimes when we ain't hear the bell, when we reach, things already begin. They have to start all over again, just for Beulah and Benji. And the other class get upset. I went to school first at the St. Peter's Primary School. In fact, when my brother just before me I had to attend, I decided I was going with him. I wouldn't be left at home, so both of us attended school at the same time. And then I passed the high school exam, and in 1965, I went to the girls' high school. Then it was merged in 1967, Bastia High School. I remember my very good friend from St. Peter's, Linda Lee Woodley, she migrated to the U.S. We came from St. Peter's Primary School together. There was Dawn Chambers, who lives in Barbados. She's also from St. Peter. Even though we may not have been in the same class, form, room, per se, we did subjects together, etc., etc. There's Joan Franks in National Bank. Well, I started my education 
at a school they call Miss Matthew School. Mm -hmm. It was the, the sort of kindergarten school that you, the sophisticated name for it now, but <laughs> you, you used to go to small schools and so on, the persons who kept school, mm -hmm. a, you call it ABC school. Oh, okay. So I went to Miss Matthews ABC school, and from there, my father was able to put me in Miss Spot school, where I stayed until there was some altercation between my father and mother, and when he decided to stop paying for me, <laughs> and I had to leave to go to the Bastard Boys School, so that my schooling was elementary, starting off first with Miss Spot school, calling um, St. George's High School, it was the name then, but then I had to go into the military elementary school, which is a good thing, because it was a more formidable education at the Bastard Boys School. It was more rounded, mm -hmm. and um, that is where I really saw the light in terms of getting an education. All right. Do you recall any of your classmates or teachers? Oh, many. Mm -hmm. Many of my classmates were still good friends. People like Horish Avosius, Franklin Musgrave, Walter Simmons, Bernal Nisbet, you know, a host of chaps who are still my friends, okay. even though some of them later went on to grammar school. They were more fortunate than I was. Not that I couldn't go. I did pass the exam, but just couldn't afford it to go. And I stayed on in the Bastard Boys School. And the fun teachers were Mr. Alexis Knight, Mr. Shepard, mm -hmm. and best of all, Mr. William Ferdinand. Mm -hmm. He did make um, an impact at the Bastard Boys School. He transformed the school so that a number of former students who you see now being in top positions and think it's really got their grounding on the William Ferdinand door. I was 14 years of age and couldn't go anywhere else. I'd stayed in Seven Standards for two years. And Mr. Door decided, well, the best thing is to get me in as a pupil teacher. And so he sent me off to teach at St. Peter's School, $24 a month. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. And I had to get a bicycle to go there, which my father organized for me from hospital. It was $10 a month out of the $24 to pay for the bicycle. Wow, well, that's yeah. like a car today. <laughs> Precisely. Mm -hmm. you know, I, was, I was a boy of boys because I had a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, um, the, the thing, though, is that um, even it was $10 that I had to give to my grandmother out of the 24 and mm -hmm. $2 for myself, um, it still did not pose any hardship because we were simple in needs, and so therefore my expenditure had to be simple. Right. Okay. okay. Any experiences that you can recall from school? Let me say that my eyes are now opened as I reflect back on what happened in school. Um, to tell you the level of poverty that existed at that time, there were people who were still coming to school barefooted. Mm -hmm. Right? And you had the inspection at mornings when you will line up outside under the, the cedar tree. And the teacher will, you did your exercises, hands up, out, down, and so on. And then they came with a pencil to push your hair to see if it was combed, and you had to show your teeth, and so on. Now, the Anglican Church here was a big provider because it provided lunch for a lot of people who couldn't go home to lunch. You had the bread and cheese tree, the black. <laughs> with the little red mm -hmm. thing that people ate and called vitamin. Then you had um, Debbie Dull Dull, Barbados Sprite. You break it open and you add the green stuff on it. Um, you had the locust tree just next to the Methodist man's. You throw stones and pieces of iron until you got a locust down, stinking too. But if you were mm -hmm. lucky enough, and I used to get two pence for my lunch, it was really to buy a penny more than a penny cake. And I would keep it in my pocket and go buy Miss Hendrickson and buy a penny pinchy. Mm -hmm. It was a flat, something what you call a cookie, but a large cookie. And then when you had that, you hid it in your pocket because if people knew you had it, especially somebody who you went in for half, <laughs> you know, it was a serious thing because he was running behind you. Hi, friends, half, half. And you're trying to get away from him because you didn't want to share your mm -hmm. pinchy with him. After we moved from McKnight and went to live, at Nevis Street, I attended the Bastia Boys School. That's where I got my first education. I went there and I could recall some teachers like Miss Percival, Willie Doerr, James Sutton, a young man called uh, Harris, Arthur Williams, 
and some other very dynamic and loving teachers who cared for us. They made sure that we got an education. We learned to read. We learned the three hours, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And they instilled in us the basic foundation that stood us in, in good shape to face adversity, to face the uh, problems and challenges that would come later in life. So I, I, I am very high on the education that was given to me at a very early age in boys school. Uh, from there, I went on to the Bastia High School and I had some excellent teachers there like Eustace Esdell, Victor Jones, Mr. Pease Walwyn, Patricia Hobson, Mr. Neville Paul, uh, Mr. Manchester, uh, Probin Innes, Mr. Bradley. So many good teachers that came across um, my educational career that you know, I just can't say enough to thank them for the quality education they provided. Uh, Mr. Ribeiro was the principal at the time when I came in, and then he gave it to Mr. Esdale and so on. So it, it was just a, a really outstanding education shaped early on by what took place at the Bastia Boys School and then later on at the Bastia High School. What about your classmates? I'm sure there has to be some outstanding story, you know, being in class that kids did and something you would never forget. Well, one thing I would never forget, and I always remind Willie Do about this, we had morning devotion every morning at the Bastia Boys School. So when they said, clasp hands, close eyes, everybody would mm. clap to clasp hands, right? <laughs> so clasp hands, right. close eyes, fine. But Mr. Do said, he was giving us warning that anybody who clapped, mm -hmm. because he felt that it was desecrating uh, the spiritual moment to be clapping at the time when we were supposed to be reverent. Right. And so he decided that um, he told us the Friday afternoon that anybody who clapped or made that sound on Monday, he was going to give them some licks. Right. I mean, he had this big, broad leather belt tucked under his arm and walk around with that. And if he did anything, he wheeled it out and across your back. And um, I could recall the Monday all of us, my classmates, uh, uh, said uh, Ivan Brooks and um, um, a guy named Gums and uh, some other uh, students and so on. We decided, oh, don't bother, don't bother, with, um, really, man. We, we're going to all clap. He can't bang the whole school. No way. So the Monday, Mr. Doe says, we now have that moment of reverence. We'll have morning devotion. Class pants. Juni Leibold was the only one in the whole school that clapped. <laughs> The only person, well, I got humiliated and my pride was hurt and I cried because really before the assembly, mm -hmm. put some licks on my tail, oh, oh, no. swell up my back, everything with a leather belt. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they say you used to soak it, you know, to make it even thicker and richer, that belt, right? And he planned my back with some blows that morning. I always remind him of that. That was something I'll never forget. Another incident I recall was at the Bastia High School where my French teacher, mm -hmm. um, we had done very badly in French, and she decided she was going to keep us in detention for a week. Mm -hmm. So the first day, mm -hmm. she left us in detention, put some work on the board, said, so must do that. She was going home to come back. Well, up to 9 o'clock, we're up there because she ain't come back yet. <laughs> She forgot us up there. Next week, we continue with Pursuing Knowledge 2, when we hear about the secondary and tertiary level experiences of some of our nationals, some of whom went abroad to advance their education. Feel free to email us at sknisgenerations.com. Overcoming Life's Challenges, Demonstrating the Unconquerable Ketitian Spirit. SKNIS is now on YouTube. Just run a quick search for The SKNIS to view this program again or any of our other programs. Hit subscribe to be alerted when we upload a new video. You can also connect with us on Facebook. Get started today.